my friends and welcome back. Today I'm going to create two different projects using pumpkins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be creating containers out of both of these and I'm going to be planting this molt copper prints and this is a gorgeous since I don't grow corn this is the next best thing and I love this kind of macaroon uh, purplish top to it and I just love that it has this greens and stripes and just beautiful colors and it just really kind of adds to that corn husk appearance and so I'm going to be planting them in this containers that I'm going to be creating now I'll talk more about this in a minute but the second project that I want to do is I'm going to be creating a garden on top of here using all these beautiful plants and succulents over here I will be using some peat moss, soil, as well as a little bit of uh, probably mulch on top of it, and then just kind of decorate it. So that's what's in for today, you guys. Now, once you open up a pumpkin and you carve all the inside, this pumpkin is going to deteriorate much faster than it would if it was never opened up. So there's two things that you can do. One of them is that you can soak this in a bath water of vinegar or baking soda, and that'll kind of get rid of a lot of the pathogens that are in the outside that also help with breaking down that pumpkin. And it'll also help seal it and keep it uh, from uh, just deteriorating a little bit slower. What I am choosing to do, and I thought about this, and what could I do to seal the outside rather than doing that, is that I went to the store and I picked up some wood furniture uh, sealant. And I figured if it works on furniture, why can't it work on a pumpkin, right? Especially because we get a lot of rain, and so this will be a good uh, water repellent. So. This is what I'm going to do. Now, will it work? I don't know. We'll find out. A couple of other things that I'm going to do to try to help this along from deteriorating. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. Now, to save some time, I already opened up one of them. So, I gutted it out and I placed a hole in the bottom of it because every container needs a hole at the bottom. On my plant, I'm going to be using this container, so I needed to make sure that this hole was large enough to just fit with this going down, but where you could still see a little bit of green because this has a lot of green, so it just works out really well with, with that. Now, because I'm going to be watering this, I'm going to be removing the bottom part of this to help from this breaking down even faster, I'm going to be lining the bottom part of this with paper bags. Now, now the reason for that is because this is going to soak up some of that moisture. I'm also going to be using peat moss and a little bit of uh, bark or mulch because that will also retain some of that moisture and soak up any moisture from inside. And that's going to hopefully keep it from deteriorating as well. So I'm just going to cut out a little bit of that, soften it up, and then I'm going to place it in the inside. Uh, basically line it up in there and lining it up with paper just like that. So because this has a hole, in the bottom right here I'm gonna go ahead and dig a hole in here as well so I dug a hole as you can see then I'm gonna be adding a little bit of peat moss and I'm just gonna add it to the inside I forgot to grab my my uh, mulch, so let me go get my mulch as well. I gotta get some gloves, heat from my 
hands getting slivers. So, okay, so the next step, I put my peat moth in there. Now you could use large bark if you want. I'm just using, you know, just regular brown mulch. You know, anything that's going to pull the moisture away from the wall and keep it a little drier. So one of the things that I didn't do this far is that I didn't spray spray this, but it's never too late to spray. Okay, so let's let's spray this because I forgot to spray it. Now I'm placing it on top of paper because I do have a chicken and I don't want her uh, pecking on the ground and then getting this on her mouth. So let me uh, seal this. So while that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and carve this one out. And again, I want to carve it to where this is going to sit on top of it. Let's see. I've got so many knives here because I'm just not sure which ones are going to work the best. Now, it's always a good idea to start small with your hole and then work your way into making it larger if you need to. I did this with a uh, butternut squash and my hands dried and my hands felt like they had been in glue and got really tight made me wonder would that be a good product to use as a facial think about that for a minute let's spray this one first but before i do that gotta dig a hole Got a hole on it. This time I'll spray it. That there. And we'll spray this. Okay, so I've got my uh, paper bag. I've got my mulch. I'm gonna add a little bit of soil in there. There we go. So now I'm just going to cut around this. Got a hole. Going to put this back. I'm placing it back because I want the roots to get into the soil. nice and now the pot because it's green just adds to the outside of this so as you can see I've got my paper I've got my soil I've got the peat moth underneath there as well as the bark this part really doesn't really matter that much if you have uh, stuff around it or not because once you place your, your pot in there like that. Pretty much it's going to put a seal around here anyway. Add a little bit more soil. Add a little bit more soil to the inside. 
because you want those roots to have some soil. Plant in there. That's the first container. Doesn't that just look awesome? <gasps> Now, again, what the peat moth is going to do is it's going to retain moisture. It's also going to uh, draw moisture up to the plant and keep it so that I have to water it all the time because this one may be outside in the elements, but it's kind of protected by my porch a little bit so it doesn't get rain on it specifically. So this will help with kind of retaining some moisture into the plant and also the bark will do that as well and then the paper bag once again is going to help draw that moisture from that pumpkin and that way it doesn't start breaking down completely it'll kind of help it i think leave it in the comments below let me know what you guys think Just a little bit of peat moss around it, just to make it look pretty. Now, I recommend that you add water to it just a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Okay. Okay, let's do this. This is, a, this is exciting. Let's just start off with some peat moss. Now the peat moss here, I'm just gonna create a little bit of a rim and then I'm gonna add a little bit of soil in the center part. To do that, I'm gonna use some glue and just kind of glue it in there. against that white. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use cactus soil. I'm just going to top it up here. Now I can start building from there. I'm gonna put my little cactus because I think this is just so adorable. And I'm gonna uh, save one of them. So most of these are succulent, so they don't need a ton of moisture, but they still need moisture to survive. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spray the soil so that it has some moisture in it. The peat moth will also uh, add some moisture. And then I'm just going to add a few little things to it. I'm going to add this little star to the top. 
this here is called a ruby red. And I'm going to take quite a bit of the soil out just so that it can sit right in there. I'm going to add a little Buddha because why not, right? And then I'm just going to add just a little bit of fern around it just because I think it'll make it a little nice. That's just going to add to the height of it. And I think I'm going to add this air plant on it. Now these air plants you can put in a jar, put them in, in a little on top of your table. They would make for beautiful. Let's do this one. Uh, they make for a great uh, plant inside your home. I think I'll add that right there. Because I think it's going to be beautiful right there. I'll add a little bit of these ones because these are beautiful. Now this one here, I'm just going to uh, snip off. And I'm going to do it right where the nodes are because that way they adhere to the, to the soil and then they'll grow roots. So it's really shaping up now and it's really looking good. Now I am going to add just a little bit more moss over on this side. This side is going to be against the wall so it's not going to really matter. But we'll put it on there anyway. Things are looking really, look really great. I've got my fern here. I've got my little air plant. Oops, it looks like I didn't quite get that out. Uh, I've got my air plant here. Now this doesn't really require water. Uh, just every once in a while you spritz it and that's uh, good to go. But uh, let me move that over just a little bit. Give a little bit of spacing there. So I'm going to add a few more of these around, but I really love this succulent because if you really look at it from a different direction, it almost looks like this little frog legs. And I really like that effect. So I'm going to prop that up a little bit more. So yeah, it's really coming together really nicely and I love it. I think it looks really great. Uh, I like the way the peat moth kind of hangs down and uh, just looks fantastic if you ask me. So I'm going to add just a little bit more to this side just to give it that hanging effect. Also on this side. Up, it's got a hold of me. So yeah, that's looking really nice. Now look at that from this uh, angle, because this is the angle I'm going to be putting it in, and that just looks fantastic. Uh, now this transensia, this hair will propagate really easily, but because I'm going to be putting it in soil, sometimes it'll take and root. But other times you need to give it a little jump start. So I'm gonna use just a little bit of root starter on this one. And, and that's what I've done with the rest of them as well. And then we'll just add a couple more of this. 
Now feculents, they will, they will root really quickly with no problems. So those I'm not worried about. Then I'll add one more back here. And I think I'm gonna go ahead with a little bit more Transcensia. So this is just a really great way to just really get creative and just let your imagination, you know, go wild with it. There, isn't that beautiful? That is absolutely gorgeous. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. So when you get a pumpkin that you really like like this, I mean, I love this little scarred area, even though that's gonna probably be covered with peat moss, I still love the overall design of this particular pumpkin. But the stem is broken. So to fix that, you can use the tops of the pumpkins that you're going to create the containers from. So I'm gonna break this one off, which I already did. And I'm choosing this one because it's got some rough edges to it, and I just love that. Plus, the stem has some green in it, and that's just going to add to the top of it. Now, the soil is going to cover a lot of this, so you're not even going to see that it was glued on, but that's what I'm going to do is just glue the top on it. And you just place it wherever you feel it looks the best and makes more sense. And that looks about right to me. Now I'm going to add my peat moss and I'm just going to kind of repeat the process where I'm adding all of these beautiful plants in here. I'm actually going to try to put this on there because this adds height. It's got a little flower on it. And I just love this little jade. Now I could have placed that jade right on the center piece and that's something else that you can do and build from there as well because that will add height. But we're gonna go with this and if nothing else, I can take that off. And again, just let your imagination run wild with this. There's my container right here. Now I'm going to add some soil on it and start building from there. Isn't this beautiful? I love it. Look at that. Look at how gorgeous that is. Okay, so now that I have a clean slate again, let's work with this. Because this is going to break down, but it's also going to not deteriorate quite that fast because it really doesn't have anything other than the shell. If anything, it's just going to get nice and hard. But I love the stem on it. I love that it's kind of a greenish stripe and it reminds me of a witch's hat so let's figure out what to do with this because i'd hate to waste this and just give it a really nice bright bed now i'm going to tuck that baby 
maybe right in there. are really cheap because you can find them in your yard and you can decorate with rocks. And to give it a little bit of water effect, add a little bit of glue. Like I mentioned, uh, you want to wet your plant that it survives if you don't want to oversaturate it because you don't want the pumpkin to run. I've got some leaves that I'm just going to add to it. So tell me, isn't this just gorgeous? Oh my gosh, if you have leaves in your yard, you have peat moth. Peat moth is really relatively inexpensive. Pumpkins are pretty inexpensive. If you can go to your nursery and find, you know, something that looks like a corn stalk, why not put it together and make yourself something beautiful either in your house or to decorate on your porch. And I just have to say there is no limit to creating. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I hope that you guys will create something, maybe put this into play for next year if it's too late this year for you. But you guys, with that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to get up, get out, and get active. And most of all, mm, I love you and I appreciate you. So let me bring you really close and then I'll see you on the next one. Okay, so I spread them apart so that you can see them a little bit better. I did take it a few steps further than I originally had planned, but isn't this absolutely gorgeous? A lot of these things were absolutely free, so you can be as creative as you like using things right out of your own yard. So let me bring you really close just so you can see where everything is. The first pumpkin, this one here, I added the little jade turtle. I had a crystal rock, so I placed it for a pond. I added a few stones from my yard and scattered them throughout. And then I added some transensia, some uh, succulents, an air plant, and a jade plant that stems up to a beautiful flower. And I also added a rock because rock represents uh, solitude. It represents grounding, and I just love them circle around and then I also added the one cactus. Okay this one here as you know I sprayed it with uh, urethane. I gutted it out and then I just found my dogwood leaves. They were on the ground. Plant put those in there. Then I added a couple of the coleuses that were right over there and up there. And I also added a rock for stability and pretty much just uh, decorated around that to just bring it out more into a fall theme. And then of course, look at how gorgeous this plant is. This is so gorgeous. And it just goes along with everything around it. You can place this in any direction because it is decorated all the way around. 
and it's just absolutely stunning. Then this one here, you can use as a tabletop. I did have a shell, an abalone shell. And so the top of the pumpkin I used as a stem, as a centerpiece. And then I just added some marigolds to it. I added the fern and I left it in the pot because I think it just added to it. I have a little snail. I added some rocks and I just added some glue to make it look like a little river stream. And then added some succulents and of course the peat moth. And that in itself is absolutely gorgeous. Would make a great centerpiece for any table. Then uh, again, here's the other one. I won't repeat it, what I said, because it's just, again, my dogwood leaves. I could have put one more here. Um, you know, I may just add that later, but for now it looks gorgeous. I could put that at the very back. So yeah. This is the last one, this is the white pumpkin. And this one here just had a stem that had, you know, some sticks in it, which I utilized those. I just used the transinthia, the succulents, the star, and an air plant. And then I did add a few stones from my garden, and or my yard, really. I added my little Buddha, an air plant, what I'm going to call as my frog legs, and a shell, because I just think that that star succulent and that air plant just kind of adds to um, kind of a an ocean theme. So yeah, so that's where that is. Anyway, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Let's go see what they look like on my front porch.